Hello everyone, we're here with Ryan from The Cribs today. Yeah. How are you feeling today? Uh, kind of, well we're, being, we're, like, we're touring on a bus at the minute, mm. which is something we generally don't enjoy doing. Um, so, I don't know why, but uh, it just kind of makes you, uh, I don't know. We much prefer being in a van because you actually kind of get to go out into the city and stay over on a night and feel a bit more normal. So, I'm kind of feeling a bit, a little bit uh, wiped out today, but uh, but you know, it's, it's nice to be back on time in the UK. We haven't really tired here since um, since I guess uh, when was the last UK? May. Yeah, when, when we put the record out, mm. we haven't tired since the record came out. So we did like festivals. Yeah. Didn't get much. No. We got actually. We we just like studio nerds, mm. and uh, we got bought like a you know like a microphone. And stuff, oh, I saw that. that, that I saw that on Twitter. I think. Yeah, yeah, that's exciting yeah. for me. Yeah. Actually, that's really exciting for me. I think I've basically had a microphone for my birthday every year since I was seventeen or something. <laughs> so, um, lost a nice tradition. They're somehow better each year, are they? <laughs> well, it just it's just such a safe bet with me. You yeah. Know, like me and Ryan have always been kind of. Um, as far as people um, buying gifts for us, we've always, we've always been a bit of a, a bit enigmatic yeah. because um, you know we don't really give a shit about fashion or um, <laughs> or even with anything like just material stuff in general. It's like because we always on tight, it's not really like you have anywhere to Keep to put. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just want to give you something. You don't have anywhere to put it. And it might like, just so. seem so boring to <laughs> people, but to, to me, it's really exciting. Well, you're going to use it, so... Yeah, yeah. it's going to make my life easier. Yeah. I think that was all we got. Um, well, Ross got us um, a Freddie Mercury DVD, which which was good, because then we watched that. We watched it on the tour bus. We did, yeah. we know, watched it uh, on the way, from, we were at the Q Awards a few uh, oh, yeah. couple of nights ago, and then we had to drive from uh, from London to uh, well, uh, Oxford, so we watched it in the, in the van on the way there the day, and it, obviously that was good. Yeah. I guess we got a Q Award for that, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. pretty good, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna say. Twice. Mm. How long ago was that? Two thousand five. Oh, all right. right. Two thousand five, two thousand six. Yeah. yeah. The last time I played the waterfront was the day before I moved to America. Oh right. So that that was the last time I was here. It's kinda weird. Yeah, it never changes much here. In no, Norwich exactly or at the, the water. Same. Yeah, the waterfront. But I like that, you know, I like I don't like change too much. It yeah. just, it's nice to have at least some semblance of stability when you're on the road. Yeah, it? yeah, that's true, yeah. So, yeah, it's a bit pathetic, really. <laughs> you cling to what you have. Yeah. I care, really. We just like to, when I say, I, you know, we like to just. I just don't like playing the same places over and over and over again, you know, if it like, um, I don't like it when it just becomes like a routine, like, like you know, like certain, certain cities only have like certain venues you can play and stuff, you know, yeah. because of, and I, you know, we, but we like to, um, you know, we used, you know, like the last time we were out um, on tour, in, in any capacity, we were doing festivals, and then before that, you know, we'll go to America where we'll tour everywhere in a van, and, uh, you know, some, in some of the smaller towns, just do like little rock clubs and stuff. And we just like, we just like it to be different, you know. Just keep things interesting. Just not bothered. It's not like it just doesn't. It's not. Matter. It's not like it's impossible to sustain. Um, some bands, and this is. I'm not. I don't mean this in a disparaging way, but some bands they find it difficult to tour without all the, you know, the accoutrement that goes with being mm, successful yeah. and like. We're just not bothered either way. It's yeah. This tar, like us, even this, within this tar, you know, we're doing such different kinds of venues. Yeah, like the waterfront is definitely the, the you know, the more intimate venue. And then in two days we'll be doing like, like the Apollo in Manchester, which yeah. is like, a, like I don't know, I don't understand. It's like it, it's it's interesting. It keeps it interesting to to do, you know, like bigger venues and small and small venues at the same time because I guess. It, it, at least every night feels different at that point. Not really, no. No, no we, we, like, we, you know, we, we only ever play the set. Depend, like the, the set that we play, we just play depending on what we feel yeah. that night, you know, when we're in the dressing room. We always really, 
Like, yeah, I think it kind of annoys them. We always write it very last minute, just based on. We don't change it that much. We don't change it around that much, but like, you just find something that works and base it off that. Yeah, it's, it's hard after five records to um, fit everything in because mm. you've got to. You've always got to play the singles, which. So, I mean, for me, I would probably start dropping some of the singles. Yeah. And and putting in. Rare it is, but it, it's hard because. You know, that will please the hardcore fans, but then the the other people will prefer something that they'd heard. And I think that you know, obviously the hardcore fans usually take the priority, but you don't want to be. You don't want to. It's just it. hard. Like we we have to try and find yeah. a bar. Like every everything that you do, I mean, at least we're, we're lucky enough that people care. But everything that we do is never quite right because you go out on tour, and we choose a set list based on three factors, one being which record you tour in at the time, so you need to like weigh stuff towards that because for one thing you're excited about them, for another thing yeah. like that's, you tour in that record. Second thing is what's going to make people happy, so you have to put some singles in there. And third thing is what's going to matter to the people who are a bit more discerning. So we always put a few deep cuts in there. And so we try and find a, as much of a balance as what we can, but after five records, it becomes yeah, more and more difficult, difficult yeah. to cut stuff. And so um, we generally get like a set that we think works, then stick to it, and then just change a few like bits and pieces each night. Well, we, we just met, we mentioned that DVD the other day. But, yeah. Um, but. W I saw you were uh, at one point a while ago writing a, a screenplay involving the mask. Oh, there was that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did that. Yeah, that's yeah. US talk. Yeah, because yeah. in the US you you don't you're in the van for ninety yeah. hours a day yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. It's brilliant. Like it's, a lot of bands that like to tour America are in a van for that reason. Yeah. But we really like it. We find it's like really productive. Yeah. Like we like to. I mean, it's really productive to sit on your ass for ninety. <laughs> we, we like yeah. to do that because you you just come up with all these kind of. Crazy thoughts, yeah. <laughs> because you'll be driving through, I don't know, Billings, Montana at like 5 a.m. and you're just going kind of crazy, just trying to figure yeah. stuff yeah. out to keep you, keep the keep you entertained. Stage. Yeah, we were actually just writing today in soundcheck, so, uh, but it's not. It's oh, not, not like, an ideal no. way of doing it, but you know, you, like you, you write all the time by accident. You don't know when you're gonna do it. So yeah, like today in sound, you know, those guys said we'll get like, a, a, like you know, like write a couple of little bits and pieces. But um, you know, as far as like you know, just, just sitting on the bus and writing, or sitting in the van writing, we, like we, ne we we'll never yeah. do that. You know, I just don't. I, I've just never felt like. I, I just kind of feel like the two things are so separate, like touring and writing. It, not not the not because you don't have the time, but because the mentality is so the different. Inclination. The, the, the mentality is so different. Like when you've been in the studio for to make a record, you want to go out on the road, so you kind of forget about that aspect. You start enjoying the you know the the, the more kind of visceral element of like you know just just playing, and then. Um, after you've done that for a while, then yeah, that you need desperate. You all of a sudden you become desperate to start like writing again, and, like you know, get new stuff. So it's like you're best off waiting until. I feel, I feel like it just makes more sense to wait until you really get that desire to do it, rather than uh, you know, try and kill time by working. Not trying to hit yeah. deadlines or anything. Mm. So. Yeah. It's Re recognition, yeah. I mean, it's 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 just nice to think that people are aware of the, just just the, uh, not rec yeah uh, acknowledgement. Just yeah. that people are aware of the fact that you did take a different route, mm. because otherwise you get the frustration of feeling like you're. Um, there's, there was a period of time when a lot of our a lot of bands who came out around the same time. Uh, well, not around the same. A lot of bands who came out after us, and they would, they kind of had a quick route to the top or whatever. Yeah. And now they're off, they're, they're all finished, mm. you know. And it was frustrating at that point because you felt like you were somehow judged on what uh, judged by yeah what they were doing and and and. Um, 
so it's really nice to have the balance redressed in the fact that you know a few years later down the line that somebody acknowledges the fact that you act it's because you took a different route you know yeah. and that was that was the source of a lot of our vitriol on, on the second and third records really so it's nice that we you know we, we can concentrate on this writing songs now and not be the all bilious all the time it's funny to be to for it to for us to be, you know, for it to be so synonymous with us really these days that you know we we um, you know like like do everything like in in the band and DIY and stuff. It's, it's not like we do it on purpose as like shtick or anything. It's just mm -hmm. I just think it just makes more sense to us. You know what I mean? It's just a, like it's just always been our way of doing things just because it just makes more sense. It's more fun than it suits us and like so it's weird to kind of like um, yeah to to win an, an award for that. You know what I mean? But. Uh, it, it, yeah, as we were saying, it's kind of, it is nice, I suppose, to like, get the acknowledgement. It's kind of a funny award, actually, because if you think about what an award ceremony is, usually it's quite, um, it, it, the, the, the quite decadent. Mm. And the idea of like rewarding things is, is again, seems quite decadent. I mean, yeah. It seems like you revel in a... In, uh, an achievement or reveling in a, um, you know, like a moment or whatever, and then, and then you, it seems like, it, yeah, it definitely is a funny juxtaposition, but, um, yeah, you don't want to be flippant about it, like, it's mm -hmm. not, it's definitely nice to be acknowledged for your way of doing things. Uh, if only for accuracy's sake, just so that it helps to... Um, I guess it makes everyone just aware of how you are. Yeah, it yeah. just helps to like let, let it be set in stone a mm. little bit that, you know, you maybe eschew the regular route, you know, and that's mm. why we've had a different career path really than yeah. a, lot of, a lot of people who were Previously considered to be of a similar ilk to us, mm. which we, we never we never really felt any kind of affinity with. So yeah. it's like a nice full stop. Yeah, mm. well, I, I like the fact uh, we were discussing this yesterday that I think that there was like you know it was perhaps viewed slightly inaccurately by like because a lot of people like oh. It's uh, you know it reminds us of the first and second record, which I just don't think that it, it's it, you know it's yeah. like that. You know it's like the the songwriting is far more. I don't think the first record is anything like the second record. No. That's the other thing. But, but I think the songwriting is far more developed. You know, it, it, because with it being our fifth record, it's certainly become much more developed. I mean, you wouldn't get anything like the the last four songs on in the Valley of the Raisin Bull on the first record. But yeah. I think it was just something to do with the fact that. The familiarity of going back to the three-piece sound, you know, is, which is, um, you know, when we made the fourth record. Now I look back at that, I do see it as being, you know, the band, it, the band being, you know, at the time we were very much adamant that it was, you know, oh, it's, this is the same band, we're just a four-piece. Now it does feel more like, um, you know, a, a, you know, I, I, I do see that as being, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, I just think that like with this one, people did you know feel some kind of familiarity with the. But know. it's because of the two tracks that we led off with. Yeah. Mm. That's really that's really mm. what where that came from, and I can see the comparison between those two tracks and the second record, but not with the first because the first record doesn't. The first record is not punk at all, is it? When you think no, about it, no. it's, it's quite twee, if anything. It's like really, there's, there's, yeah. there's, and it's, it's really quite sweet and good natured. Um, very different from the second one. The first two tracks we led off with this record, or the first two tracks that people heard, were punk and noisy and, and recorded live, <coughs> and, you know, uh, approached in that way. And so I think that maybe was that that colored people's perception of what the record actually was because i think it had more 
layers to it than, than that. And that was yeah. my one frustration, but I was definitely happy with the it seems to be a commercial and critical acceptance of it. I felt like most people got it right. Yeah. yeah. And if people didn't like it, usually people didn't like it for the reasons that we did like it, you know? So that's totally fine. That's like it's only like when people don't understand it that it's a problem. I think yeah. by and large it was pretty well um, understood. I so. feel like our fan base liked it too, which is always a good indication of, um, you know, it's, like it's, it's kind of a good indication of, uh, it, like, because, of the, because I, I feel like our fans are quite opinionated and quite precious about, you know, the stuff that we uh, put out or like, you know, compared everything to how it used to be. I was like, oh, I prefer yeah. things how it used to be. I'm not old school and, you know, I like all the old school stuff or whatever. But, um, so, it, like, uh, like, the fact that, like, it, it went down well with our fans, I think that was a good, you know, it was quite a good indication of, uh, you know, it being a decent record. Right, well, thank you very much, guys. We've got loads more we'd like to ask you, but <laughs> we're out of time. So, thanks for talking to us. Yeah, cheers, guys. Have a good, nice. good time. Thanks. thanks. Cool.